everyone and welcome to the UNCG Libraries Online Learning and Innovation webinar series. My name is Sam Harlow. I'm the Online Learning Librarian for UNCG Libraries. In this series, different UNCG instructional technology consultants, ITS staff, and faculty will cover topics on online learning pedagogies, UNCG instructional technology tools such as Canvas, Google, and more, and uh, other things to do with these topics. So these are 30 minute webinars and they're recorded in WebEx meetings where we are now and then placed on uh, this library webpage. So we have had some technical difficulties with um, this webpage service. Uh, so if it's not working right now, I apologize, but it should be working soon. Uh, but there is the URL in the chat. Uh, it also will contain uh, links to other applicable materials and presentation materials if needed. So uh, we will also be recording this file. We put it on YouTube and that's where we close caption it. So as I uh, am about to start, there's a couple of logistical things. Please mute yourself while we are presenting by clicking the audio icon next to your name to turn it red, but you can turn your audio back on by clicking it to ask questions at the end of the webinar. Throughout the webinar, please put your questions in chat and I will monitor them for our host. So if you have any technical issues during the webinar, you're welcome to email me. I'm going to drop my email in the chat. Um, but also remember these are being recorded. So uh, worst case scenario, you can also get the recording. Um, so if there's any questions, let me know through the chat. Um, but if you all have questions, uh, I will introduce our presenter today. So this session is hosted by Amanda Shipman, the LMS Administrator for UNCG Technology Services, ITS, and is on Canvas Analytics. So Amanda, I'm going to mute myself. Alrighty, you guys can hear me. Perfect. I didn't hear anything, so I'm going to say <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so um, I want to talk today about new analytics in Canvas. And I say new, it's sort of not new because we've had um, this um, available to us in Canvas for a little more than a year now. Um, and it was formerly called analytics beta. Um, and sorry, I'm using my little pointer. It's the first time I've used this in Google Slides, so I'll try not to get too busy with it. Um, but uh, just some background. So it was available to us for about a year. You may have noticed it um, in your course navigation whenever you go to your course settings and you can hide and unhide navigation items. In the hidden area, you would have had analytics beta available to you. Um, this actually came out of beta uh, this past October. And so now it is available to turn on in your courses. So I'll show you how to do that. And all courses will transition to this new analytics before March 2020, which is the end of life for our current course and user analytics that you currently see in your Canvas courses. Um, new analytics is more robust and offers an updated user-friendly interface for getting analytics for your course as well as comparing a single student participation in grades with other students in the course um, or you can compare sections with the overall course for example we'll talk more about this if you have a cross-listed course um, you can compare different sections in that cross-list uh, the data in new analytics is refreshed every 24 hours, just something to keep in mind so it's not quite real time. And um, there are two main functions in a new, day, new analytics. One is course grade analytics, which allows you to look at grades for assignments for the whole class, and then you can compare single students with the whole class average. You can also look at weekly online activity, uh, which allows you to look at individual students and the whole averages for the whole class, their page views and participation. And for each of these, we're going to focus on the charts that they show you in Canvas, but you can also switch over to data tables. That's more difficult for me to do over this because I'm using real data um, from some Canvas courses and for reason due to FERPA, I can't show you names um, or course names or anything. So um, it's a little more difficult to do that in this presentation to hide the names in the data table. So, but you can most definitely explore those on your own in your Canvas courses should you choose to turn this on. So turning on new analytics in your course is pretty simple. Um, if you go to your course settings, um, which is the settings options at the bottom of your course navigation, click on the feature options tab 
and then in that list you should see new course and user analytics and you just simply toggle it on and that will turn it on for you when you do this this is going to replace in your course everywhere where you currently see course analytics so as an example on your course homepage over in the right hand um, the right hand side of the page where you normally see buttons like view course stream new announcement student view etc you see view course analytics when you turn on new analytics in your course you're now going to see new analytics um, and there are other areas in the course where these new analytics will appear um, one being when you go to the people area of your course and click on any specific student in that list you get a student context card that kind of moves over um, slides over from the right hand side of the screen with some data about that student and you'll now see a new analytics button. We'll talk a little bit more about that. So one of the first functions that became available to us in new analytics in, in case you happen to have turned this on in your course prior to today when it was analytics beta um, is the course grade analytics. Um, this allows instructors to view the average course grade for all course data using an interactive chart or table. Additionally, instructors can filter analytics results to compare the average course grade with a specific section, student, or assignment. So just wanted to take um, a minute to talk about what we're looking at here. Um, first, at the top right, the specific course I'm in um, where I used to grab these analytics um, was concluded. So if you want to go turn this on in old courses to look at it, that's doable. That's not a problem. Just note it's going to tell you up at the top right hand corner that the course is concluded. If I'm in a live course that's currently happening, if I decide to turn this on in my fall, one of my fall 19 courses, it's going to give me a, the date and time that this data was last refreshed. Um, so I'll show you on some subsequent slides what that looks like. So just something to keep in mind um, to note that's when it was last refreshed. So if you happen to just finish grading some stuff and you notice your analytics aren't accurate, that will be because it hasn't refreshed. Um, so this in this course grade display, um, I'm just looking at uh, average assignment grades for a course. So I see here I've got all sections including in this, which again, depending on if you have a cross listed section, you may only have one section in your course. Um, it's showing me assignments, discussions and quizzes. So based on whatever assessment types you have in your course, you may only have assignments. So you may only be seeing assignments, but this particular course had assignment assignments, graded discussions and quizzes. Um, and you'll see these icons at the bottom of the chart as well. Um, these icons align with the dots that I, the blue dots that I'm seeing in the chart and you can't see that now but when you go look at this in your own course when you mouse over any of these blue dots it's going to tell you the assignment name but this just gives you a nice overview of what the grades are looking like um, average grades for any given assignment again graded discussion or quiz in this course and looks like you know most of them are between 75 percent and 100 percent So if I wanted to then go in and add a student to then compare a single student's grades with the rest of the class, I can do that. Um, I've blurred out the student's name for this because again, this is a real class. Um, and again, I mentioned too, this is a, a live class. So the data for this was last refreshed on November 13th. Um, but I'm now comparing this one student with all sections or all students in the class. So I get a nice overview of how the student's performance looks for the given assignments. This particular course didn't have any quizzes um, or graded discussions. So as you'll notice at the bottom, you're seeing only assignment icons, which is that pen and paper. Um, but again, I could filter these. I didn't mention that before, but if I had quizzes and graded discussions, I can uncheck them um, if I wanted to only look at assignments or if I wanted to only look at quizzes, I can do that. But again, I get a nice overview. It looks like this student for the most part is a little above average and some maybe not, um, but this is how the student compares with the rest of the class. I can add one additional student to this filter. Um, so I, 
um, any given time you can only have three items in the filter. So this is always going to exist. You're always going to see all sections. So I can add two students here, but then I can switch out students if I wanted to be begin to compare other students with all sections. Um, just note that you can only do essentially two students at a time. And the same would be true for sections. Again, if I have a cross-listed course with multiple sections, I can choose um, up to two sections to compare with the whole course. The other thing that I can do in the course grade analytics is besides filtering based on student and section, I can filter for assignment. So in this particular chart, I've filtered by the speech to assignment, and it's going to give me some metrics regarding this specific assignment. So um, I see here the average grade for the assignment has been 84.8. I've got my low and my high. And then I would also see here the number of students that are missing the assignment, the number of students that submitted the assignment late. Um, and then what I could also do is click on those numbers and see the specific students. Um, in this example, we don't have any, um, but just, you know, in your own courses, imagine being able to go click on those and be able to see which specific students um, submitted missing and late. What you'll also see is that I can email students from this screen. So, a nice little arrow, it's crooked. Um, if you click on the envelope icon, um, what you'll then get is the message students screen and I can message students here based on their score range for this assignment. I can message only students that are missing this assignment. Right now, 85 students are missing this assignment. So again, if I, what I have currently set up is to send a message to all the students missing, so all 85. And I can send a message to students who were late to submit this assignment. That's going to show up, um, in case you were wondering, that's going to show up for students in their Canvas inbox. And then again, based on their notification settings, they may also get an email in their UNCG email, um, whatever they've chosen to do as far as their settings are concerned. So switching gears a little bit, uh, moving on from the course grade analytics, you have available to you weekly online activity analytics. Um, what you'll see, actually, there's a drop down here when you enter in new analytics that allows you to switch between the two. Um, so this is how I've brought up weekly online activity. So what I'm seeing here is a view that allows instructors to see the average number of page views and participations for a course using the interactive chart. Additionally, you can filter analytic results um, and compare the average course activity with a specific student or section, just like I did with the course grade analytics. So right now, let's just talk a little bit about what we're seeing. Um, page views. So this is again, we're looking at the whole course. Um, all students in the course, all sections, um, and these are the page views. And basically, page views in Canvas equate to clicks. Whenever a student clicks on anything in your course in Canvas, that's a page view. So they're clicking on um, an item in a module, or they're clicking to open an assignment. Um, they're opening an assignment, but that's not necessarily participating in an assignment. That's sole, just a sole page view. So you can kind of get an idea of, um, let's say how much time a student is spending in your course based on the page views. So these page views are for given weeks. So for what I'm seeing here is for the week of September 1st, um, we had an average of 56.1 page views for all students in the course with a total of over 5,000. So again, I can get those numbers throughout the semester. What you may also notice is specifically if you're looking at an older course is that you'll see an actual scroll bar that allows you to scroll left and right um, because when you open up new analytics, it's gonna pretty much open up to a current, a current day and time. So it's given me 
pretty much the whole semester. But if I were looking at analytics for a course from the spring, I would have to actually scroll over to the right to see that. Um, just something to note that when you open an old course's analytics, it's not you're going to see nothing, no activity. So scroll to the left and you'll be able to see the activity for spring or whatever prior semester you're looking at. Um, so see the weekly activity or page views and then participation. So participation is a little more concrete. Um, and these are the things that actually are identified as participation items in Canvas. So an announcement, whenever a student posts a comment on your announcement, which doesn't happen for the most part because by default we have those disabled. But if you happen to enable those in your course, if a student posts a comment on your announcement, that's a participation. When they submit an assignment, that's a participation. When they load a collaboration to view or edit a document, that's a collaboration. Excuse me, that's a participation. Conferences, if you happen to use web conferences in Canvas as opposed to WebEx, which not a lot of folks do. When a student joins a web conference, that would also register as a participation. Posting to the discussion, creating a page. Again, that's not an activity most people are doing. Uh, for the most part, teachers are creating pages. Um, but if you happen to open that up to your students, if they were creating a page, that would register as a participation. And of course, submitting a quiz and starting a quiz. So for the most part, for us here at UNCG, our participations are submitting assignments, submit, starting and submitting quizzes, and contributing to discussions. So you'll be able to see that information again, just like with the page views, when you um, mouse over any of these data points, you would see the pop-up that tells you the average number of participations and the total number of participations for these weeks. course I can also then compare just like I did with the course grade analytics I can compare students with the class as a whole so I have filtered out a student here as you can see again I've blurred the name but represented with the green dots is this student's page views and participation and then you can kind of get an idea how it correlates with the rest of the class and what that looks like Again, I can add another student here. I can um, add sections if I wanted to do that. If I had a cross-listed course. Also on this weekly online activity, with that student filtered out, I can actually, sorry, the Google slides pop up. I can actually look at the bottom of the page and see for this specific student, I can get the the actual numbers that um, for their page views and participations for this date range. So for this date range, um, August 11th to November 17th, I'm looking at their total page views and total participations. If I had not, this is something that's more again more difficult to show you since I can't show you actual student data. Um, if I had not filtered out the one student down here at the bottom, I would see all students, page views and participations. You'll also notice resources here. If I switch over to resources, I would then be able to see for each student um, the number of times they participated, if it is an assessment, otherwise resources or other things in Canvas like um, Canvas pages. So if you wanted to see how many times a student viewed a specific Canvas page, you'd be able to do that by looking under resources. What I can also do um, with the weekly on activity is message students. So right here on this page, I can click the envelope icon and bring up the window to message students, but your criteria is a little bit different here. So if I want, wanted to, um, let's say, message students that did not view a specific resource in my course. So what I can do is click this drop down button and I would get a list of resources in the course. Um, and then it would tell me which students did not view. They would be listed here if I clicked here, but nonetheless, it's gonna send the message to all of those students 
then I can compose whatever message I would like to send to them. Um, so for the resources, again, you're going to see Canvas pages for the most part, other items in Canvas files that they could have opened or downloaded, um, not necessarily assessments. But if I switch over to participated or did not participate, I can message students that did not participate in something. So for example, if there's a discussion and maybe it's not a graded discussion, um, I can still see that they did not participate or post anything in that specific discussion if I click did not participate and select that discussion here and then send them a message. Hey, I've noticed, you know, you haven't contributed to this week's discussion board. Please go in and do so so the other students in the class will have a chance to respond before the due date. Something to that effect. So Sorry, my sound's a little weird. Um, so the last thing I wanted to mention as far as analytics are concerned um, is the communication. And this is a specific analytic or metric that um, is not visible in all areas where you can click on analytics. But this specifically you would see if you go into the people area for your course and um, click on a student, again, the student context card slides out on the left, excuse me, on the right side of the screen. And then it kind of gives you an overall view of their grades, how they're doing in the course. But if you click new analytics there, you'd be able to see the course grade weekly online activity for this one student. But then you also have a communication area. And this kind of gives me an idea of how actively this student and instructor have been interacting with each other, at least view, uh, via Canvas conversations or the Canvas inbox. So for this specific course, this is the total number of messages um, that were sent by the, st the student and the instructor. Again, the instructor here at the bottom, student at the top. This is not a great example because it looks like all communications um, took place on one given day. Um, hopefully you would you know, see a consistent communication um, for the student throughout the semester. Um, specifically, I guess if they were having having trouble, you'd want to keep a constant communication with them so you'd see more data throughout the semester. And actually, I think this was a summer course, so um, actually prior to the fourth. But nonetheless, this is what this is telling you. I believe um, Instructure, which is the vendor for Canvas, plans to add on to this bit. Um, I remember seeing something about adding subjects, email subjects or um, subject line somewhere in this data where you'd be able to see more so what exactly were you, or why were you communicating with the student? What were you guys talking about that might give you a better idea of what's happening with the student? Again, this course is concluded, um, so I'm not getting the last um, update. Throughout all of these charts, um, you'll notice a download button. And so I can download this data here. I can download the data for the course grade activity chart. I can download the data for the online activity analytics. They're all going to come down in multiple CSV files where you'll get the very same data that you're looking at here. Um, what you'll also see everywhere are this, these three dots, which indicates a a menu or some options that you have and that's how you'd switch over to the data tables where again you'd move away from these visual charts and you'd see data tables with student names and grades and um, for this would be message data. So just to kind of summarize, um, new analytics is out of beta officially but Instructure will continue to make improvements. These are some of the enhancements or improvements they're, they're working on right now. Um, improvements to the data table layouts in the course grade and weekly online activity charts. Um, some improvements to support performance for large course sizes. Um, from what I understand, uh, the data, they get a weighted average based on the number of assignments and then um, multiply times the number of students in a course, I believe it is. And so if you had a large course with a lot of students, 
and a lot of assignments um, you may have problems with. I've not encountered an issue yet and I don't have specifics on how big, but there could be some limitations. We'll just put that out there if you have um, a really large course. Um, and when I say large course, I mean a large enrollment um, with a lot of assignments. Um, so feedback is welcome. If you encounter an issue, open up a six tech ticket, let me know. Um, and I'll definitely relay that information back to the vendor, but just know that they are working on that. Um, enabling the back browser button. I don't rely heavily on the back browser button, um, so I didn't really notice issues, but um, it looks like there are. Adding gestures and mouse scrolling for all charts. And of course, the end of life for legacy course analytics. And legacy course analytics are just the analytics that you currently have in your course. Um, lastly, improvements to the grade <clears throat> distribution data. So looking to include mean, median, and mode. Um, so these are all things that are coming. Um, and if you want to know more about these things and take a look at the um, detailed documentation, you can go check out the analytics user group in the Canvas community. Um, if you've never been out in the Canvas community, feel free just to Google Canvas community. It's going to come up. There's various user groups out here based on different features in Canvas. They've got one for analytics, and this is where you'll find the roadmap, what they're working on. Um, you can send feedback here. So if you've noticed something that's um, problematic for you, if you're not sending it through us through Six Tech for us to, to send over to the vendor, feel free to give feedback here in the Canvas community. Um, they welcome that information. Thanks, Sam. She posted the link for you in the chat. Um, so that's, um, let me just give you a quick, I meant to click on that. Perfect. So here's the Canvas community. Again, just to summarize, this is a huge resource for me. Everything I need to know Canvas related is here. So again, these are the phases of the um, new analytics and resources. You've got FAQs, known issues, um, and the release notes. So anytime a new release comes out for Canvas, which is pretty much once a month, um, the features specific to new analytics will be notated here. So again, feel free to come check this out. In addition to turning it on in your course and taking it for a spin. Right now, there are analytics available to students, but we don't have those turned on. So anything that you do, regarding new analytics, turning it on in your course is not going to be visible to students. So um, there's really no, shouldn't have any hesitation about turning it on um, and hopefully you'll find it more useful than what's currently out there. And that sums up new analytics for you guys. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? You can either unmute yourself or put them in the chat for Amanda. Amanda. So Matt asked, can you get activity data more detailed than weekly? Nope. Um, I mean, other than the um, access reports that you currently have, um, when you go click on a student, for example, in the people area. Now, I have a let me not get off topic there. So the access reports are still there. So when you want to go look at a specific student and their page views and participation for any given item in Canvas or assessment in Canvas, that's still available. Um, but I haven't, I'll be honest, I haven't looked in great detail with what data comes down in that CSV download. So take a look at that, go into a course, do this, the download with the weekly online activity um, analytics and see what you get there. I, like I said, I didn't pay a lot of attention to that because I was focusing most on the visual um, charts that were available in the interface. So check that out. That might give you more details. Any other questions? I have a question. Um, is it possible that it added to get analytics from like a department level, like, for example, if, uh, you know, you're 
department head of whatever, and uh, you want to see like uh, how active instructors are, um, you know, again, like going beyond a course level of analytics. Is that possible? Um, well, we'll say as far as the analytics that we looked at today, those the grade activity and again, that's not going to include any teacher activity like you mentioned the grade activity online. That's all student activity. Those analytics will be available at what we call a sub account level. It's not currently available at a sub account level, but if you know anything about our structure in Canvas and how we've organized courses in Canvas, they are, although not visible to an instructor, courses do reside within a departmental sub account and that departmental sub account resides into a larger college or school sub account. So um, at some point in time in the future, we've been told those analytics will be available at a sub account level, but not yet. As far as the activity that you mentioned specifically around teacher, um, not in native canvas. Um, that's going to be data that's in a separate product called canvas data. Um, which um, comes at a separate cost and then there's some setup around being able to, you know, do some visual analytics with that data and um, it's a lot of work. I'll say that um, that we don't currently do with that data um, canvas data, but it's something we're looking to do um, as we have a tool called Splunk available to us. Um, we're looking at beginning to feed some of this data from the canvas data portal over to Splunk to see what kind of metrics we can get. So I can't make any promises because I don't know what's available to us in Splunk um, and what that will look like. It's something we're interested in and so something we're working on and hopefully we'd be able to look at maybe some teacher activity and what instructors are doing in Canvas. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else have any questions? If anyone's thinking of their questions uh, or if we're wrapping up, um, there's only one more left in this series of online learning webinars, and it is hosted by Michelle Folkman, who is in this room on uh, Wednesday, December 4th, uh, December, uh, I think 4th, I think I have a miss 4th at 1 p.m. So it's on tips and lecture capture. Uh, lecture and web capture. So the sign up is on that link I uh, provided you if you're interested. Uh, you will get a recording to this link uh, to this webinar uh, soon. Usually I can provide them in the next couple of um, days. So look for it uh, at the early next week. But if there are no other questions, uh, everyone have a great Friday. I hope everyone has a great weekend. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. And just quickly, if you guys do think of anything, feel free to shoot me an email. Thanks. Bye, all. Bye.